Hey there my wonderful friends, today is the day I invite you into my humble workshop. In this video get ready for the behind the scenes tour where I will unveil my workshop layout, introduce you to my trusty tools and demonstrate how they work. And hey stick around until the end, I'll even uh, share where you can get your hands on similar tools to experience the joy of crafting with hand and rattle power tools yourself. Why not hit pause, brew yourself a cozy cup of coffee or tea and settle in for a delightful journey to 1900s. A huge shout out to my dear friend Katie for her invaluable help for this video and endless support over the years. This silver coin has a special place in this shop and my heart and I enjoy delicious gumdrops Katie, thank you so much. The first thing to note is that my workshop is mostly underground. This setup enables me to work comfortably in both winter and summer without the need for heating or cooling. In January 2024 the temperature outside plummeted to minus 37 degrees Celsius. As a result the cast iron ventilation system froze, as you can see. Despite this extreme cold, the workshop maintained a temperature of plus 4 degrees Celsius. While this might seem cold to some, it's ideal for operating treadle and hand power tools in my opinion. I have divided my workshop into several smaller sections. The blue area is mainly for storing materials for knives. The long yellow area is for woodworking, where I do all my cutting, turning, filing and so on. Next is my leatherworking area, small but nicely equipped. In the corner are all the chemicals I use in my restorations. The desk is my heaven for intricate work. Beneath its surface lies a treadle powered rotary tool and a storage unit with drawers, housing all I need for my detailed creations. Here is a treadle powered drill press, small metal pieces, drills and a wonderful gift from my friend Grant Alexander. I will put a link in the video description if you want to see how he made it. I just love it. Thanks buddy. At the heart of this shop stands a powerful treadle powered metal lathe. And last but not least a complete blacksmith corner and the working table in the middle. Stick around, I will dive deeper into the tools and show you my favorites. I have a few hammers over here and an anvil that dates from the 1700s. I believe this is the oldest tool that I have and absolutely wonderful piece. I use it often for a variety of tasks. According to the seller this comes from a circus group that was traveling around the world and used it for all kinds of repairs. Right beside the entrance is the treadle power stone wheel. The stone wheel has medium coarse grain, its construction is simple yet durable. It boasts amazing speed and it's incredible easy to operate. It can be used dry or wet. Since there was enough room I mounted a 40 inch post vise. Next to it in the corner is a treadle powered forge. Although there are no markings indicating the manufacturer, I can say with certainty that it was made by Luna. Here I also have hardening oil, water and some blacksmith tongs. A blacksmith shop wouldn't be complete without a heavy duty drill press. Simple in design yet very effective, it's always a joy to use. There are no manufacturer marks on it, only the number 500. Across the room is a storage area where I keep various types of wood and antlers for knife handles. Underneath are drawers containing blades, brass, copper. Manufactured in England from 1928 to 1965, the treadles crossover also known as GEM, G -A -M, fret saw, was a cherished tool among hobbyists worldwide. Operated by foot pedal, it offered precise woodworking capabilities and showcased England's craftsmanship. Distributed by Hobbyist Limited, a British company still in operation today. The saw remains a symbol of vintage ingenuity and woodworking excellence. Back in the day it was common to make your own planes up to 1930s. Most planes were made from locally grown wood with birch being the most commonly used material. I have a nice collection of planes ranging in size, shape and color. Although I haven't had the chance to use many of them, they seem solid and nicely made. I also have some metal planes such as Stanley Derek, Greenfield, Record, Sargent, etc. There is a good variety of hand drills in this shop. They vary in size, construction, use, gear ratio, speed and so on. 
Some of them date from around 1800s, while others are from around the 1950s. Besides unbranded ones, I have drills from Miller's Falls, Stanley, Goodall Company, Yankee and Herman. I bought this woodworking bench in 2020 from a lady. It looks brand new, despite being around 70 years old. It still has the original label with a patent number. Underneath the bench I store all my files and I primarily use this bench for cutting, sanding, filing, planing and so on. Above the bench and on the right hand side from the treadle power sander I have antique wooden clamps in various lengths. Next to the woodworking bench is my foot powered lathe for wood. Seller's grandfather made it around 1870s and still works perfectly after so many years. When you get a written, it's not that hard to work on. In the very corner I have stored all my hand saws. There are many types here, ranging from small to large. Underneath them is a treadle powered sander with a steel brush wheel that I recently created. Many have asked how I build it. I simply combined a vintage drill sander with a broken treadle powered forge and connected them with a belt. It works great not because of my skills but purely because it's simple design with very few parts. There aren't many things that can go wrong. This is a Victor Table Weiss that I bought a few years back. It came by mail from the northern parts of Norway. It works as it should, even though it looks rough. I'm using it for shaping, cutting, holding, bending and so on. And here is my leather working station. Over the years I have collected all the necessary tools for working with leather. And generally I enjoy the process. For me the scent of leather is delightful, its texture is soft and the final products never fail to bring a smile to my face. I own two of them and I am in the process of restoring a few others. The first is vintage bench pillar drill manufactured by Keen MC Gooding & Co. in England. While its precision is decent, in my experience it's best suited for drilling soft materials such as wood or plastic, as it tends to drop too quickly when used on metals leading to bend and break drill bits. The second drill produced by the Godel Pratt Company in Greenfield, USA in 1908. It is highly accurate and ideal for metal drilling. Its increments are so small that drilling through materials takes a significant amount of time. However, this precision offers a remarkable control during drilling operations. Underneath the bench there is a treadle powered rotary tool that I created in 2021 by merging a treadle powered sewing machine with a hand crank grinder. I primarily use it for cutting and for tight spaces where grinding, sanding or cleaning is required. Most prized piece in my workshop. After 6 years looking for one I was fortunate to put my hands on this one. It's made by W. F. and J. Barnes. The company was founded in 1857 by William Barnes and his brother John in Rockford, Illinois. The company was known for producing high quality machine tools and mine is from around 1890s according to the seller. I use it for many applications now and always put smile on my face. Absolutely gorgeous working piece. I perform all my polishing tasks using a hand crank grinder. Its interchangeable pads make it versatile for various tasks like polishing, grinding and cleaning. Although I have several grinders, as this particular one holds a special place as my favorite that I restored 4 years ago. It was manufactured by the American grinder MFG Co. in Milwaukee around the 1930s. Back then there were numerous models available as you can see. Safety wasn't the top priority, much of the safety equipment was either discarded or in poor condition. I managed to get my hands on this dust foil respirator number 66, which is complete and fully functional.
Since 2019 I have restored 82 knives and 47 tools. But I haven't had the chance to restore this miter saw from Germany yet. It falls under the trademark Ulmia Model C. Additionally, here are a few more shots of tools that I haven't mentioned in this video. When it comes to buying antique tools, you have two options based on your budget. You can buy tools that are in great shape, which will cost you a small fortune, or you can buy tools that are rusty and broken, requiring effort to restore. If your intentions are just to test out the tools, I highly suggest starting with a more affordable option. After some time you can decide if this craft is for you and invest more money in better quality tools. The best places to find antique tools largely depend on your location. The most fruitful discoveries often come through friends and family who may know of individuals looking to sell antique tools. Garage sales are an excellent starting point if they occur in your area. Flea markets are also great, especially if you are interested in purchasing tools in bulk. Whenever I travel outside of Norway, I always keep an eye out for these opportunities. As for online sources in Norway, I use fin.no to search for antique tools. It is a Norwegian online marketplace. Competition is fierce and desirable tools tend to sell quickly, so it's important to stay vigilant. Additionally, eBay is a highly recommended second option. Depending on regulations and costs in your country, you can find quality pieces at affordable prices. You can check out Etsy, but it's a bit pricey over there in my opinion. Personally, I don't buy much outside of Norway due to the high cost of shipping and additional 25% tax on top of it. And see you next time.